So, Stellaris, fishy pressure. Or more poetically, Iron Songs Among Stars, who interestingly, by the way, our current leader, Honeydew Shoot, is actually not of our race. That's how enlightened we are. She is, uh, in fact, a Lavis, um, which is interesting. Uh, we should actually look at our Lavis while I remember. Uh, empire species, because we still have a bunch of really annoying little empire species that we need to flog on. Slake moths are the ones we want to keep. All of these others we can flog off. Apart from the lavis, but what we could do with the lavis, now that we can do it, is we should actually re-engineer them so that they're happy on um, aquatic planets and uh, converters. That's what we should actually do, to re-engineer them. But first, we have bigger concerns in place. Where we left the stream, if I remember rightly, is we are at war with the Thorquil Enterprises. Or more specifically, they declared on the Death from Above, who are essentially the Slake Moth sub-empire we created. Largely because we wanted some really, really dangerously very strong moths as our soldiers. But we are in a hegemony, and they are the other member of our hegemony. They are kind of almost like our vassal who isn't vassal. But yeah, the Thorquil declared on them, which means we have been gradually winning this war for the death from above. The downside of this, of course, is that we are unable to declare peace, because we are not in charge of the war. And at the end of last stream, if I remember, we have three decent sized fleets. We have this fleet, which is over here watching and manning the top border, and we might want to push into their territory just to try and do some damage. We have the Cries of the Fallen, which is only an 8k fleet and is running away for now. And could probably do with some serious reinforcing. But we'll get to that in a bit. And we have the Crunch of Bones, led by Baku Propagates. The main issue we had with Baku with this, and the reason why this fleet is currently lost in space, is because they were happily doing stuff around here, and then randomly decided they were going to start a fight with the Aether Drake, Which was not useful. Not useful in the slightest. So, our two fleets that were happily controlling the Thorquil Emperor Enterprise's 11k fleet down here now aren't. Which is why these guys are running away. Now actually we should probably bring them down on the basis that, at, that with a bit of luck we can use that fleet by the time that crunch of bones reappears then we can do stuff with it. But that'll do. In other news we have some debris that we could go and investigate. We have our fleet missing in action. We have a hostile fleet presence in system. This is because they are gradually liberating up the systems, but we did manage to get away. We can activate our relic, which is going to give us 20% upkeep res reduction for 20 years. And yes, we will absolutely activate that. And we have a ton of stuff that we could sell and do things with. So we might as well, actually, while we're here and while we're recovering, sell 10k of that. Sell 10k of that. Buy a ton of alloys. And let's uh, get some fleet reinforcement on. Most particularly of Tears. Tears of Families is our Federation fleet. Cries of Fallen is one of our fleets. So we're going to prioritize reinforcing our fleet. So that's going to pick up three cruisers, which is nice. So stuff is happening. Stuff is ongoing. In planet terms... Uh, we have, there was an enemy fleet moving around there, but we'll watch that carefully. In planet terms, Whispers of Home can upgrade, so should upgrade. Silence of Dunes can upgrade and should upgrade. Now, I'm thinking, once we discover the thing that allows ecological adaption, we will adapt Silence of Dunes, but that's when we'll, we'll make the other species um, settle on this. We have Ring of Anvils. 
which has a bunch of stuff it can upgrade, but it will upgrade that. Chink of Coins is doing quite nicely. Doesn't has a couple of spare plenty of spare jobs, so that's fine. Murmur of Shoals is good. Pair of Machines needs a governor. Uh, we'll take a bureaucrat because they're always useful. Crash of Waves is fine. Akmal is fine. They have a governor. They are a foodie world and are doing foodie things. Lots of jobs, so no need to build anything on that yet. Hiss of Steel does need jobs. It is building two agricultural districts just to make sure we got some worker jobs. And then it's really, but it's really about the industrial districts, so that's fine. Now the other thing that is worth noting is we are not just in that war. We are also in this war, the Naharan Crisis War. Because the Nahar Skull Lords, fun group of people over here, have decided that they like the idea, this purification committee, they can purify by committee, have decided that they are crisis aspirants. So the entire galaxy is currently at war with them. Which would be less of a problem if they didn't link directly to our wormhole. So one thing we probably want to be thinking about... I've got a megastructure there. Which megastructure is that? An, a therophasic engine frame. That is where they're building their big crisis thing then. So the other thing to think about is the fact that technically we are at war with the crisis aspirant through there. Now, if I remember, Gargantua Station is pretty gargantua. We have 10 defense platforms out of 26, but we may actually want to boost that a bit more. Good evening, Suza. Um, if you, by the way, guys, if you um, missed the Sunday stream with Suza where we were doing Stellaris tutorial stuff, that will premiere on YouTube on Wednesday morning. So you can catch that again, live stream style, on Wednesday morning on YouTube. So yeah, busy galaxy, basically. Um, we could actually use the time, really, to go and conquer that, but we want our fleet space before we do that. So yeah, generally speaking, we'd like to end this war, but can't, because we didn't start it. We need the death from above to end it. And I bet you they're not going to end it anytime soon. We are, however, landing troops. So who is fighting there? Right, well, we secured that. So if nothing else, we have at least secured that. Oh, no, tested positive for COVID. Hope you're feeling all right. You did say on Sunday you weren't feeling great. Which is never fun. See that they're gradually taking back this territory now. And we can't compete with that yet. Because until we get our fleets back to full strength, we're going to have problems. On the plus side, this fleet is fully repaired. And we might as well upgrade them while they're there. Because we do have shipyards on there. Yeah, that's the key thing. And, you know, always the thing with the vaccine is, is it's as much about stopping, stopping you from having the worst of it as it is stopping you getting it. Yes, look, they're filtering tiny little fleets up this way again. But to be honest, as soon as that fleet re-emerges, we should be fine. We might in the longer term want to build a big starbase, big hefty starbase here. Because that is our only kind of unprotected border into our territory at the moment. Seriously, though, lads, peace out, because you're not winning this war. Just settle the status quo. Have we got on the edict for... Yeah, we have got exotic gases as fuel, so at least we have exotic gases as fuel. No, 
Uh, we're generating a ton of stuff, so we're not badly off. Right, Crunch of Bones has re-emerged. Where have you re-emerged? Right. Okay, if you're re-emerging there, we are actually going to pull you... How strong are you? 11k. Right, if we take them to there and repair there... So get there and repair there. Actually, we are, and I know they've just come all the way down. Go all the way back up there again, please. Go deal with all of this shittiness that's coming up this way. Taking aggressive action. Because they've got some fleets down here, but this fleet plus this fleet at full strength will deal with them. Like that, we're not far off being able to reinforce the totals. Where is Tears of Families? Tears of Families can come down and get and join this party. So Drums of War is holding the north. That leaves them close enough to deal with any issues at Gargantua if we need to. But Gar Gargantua should hold. Have a lot of ships in this area now. Mm. Yeah, with all our fleets down here, we'd be fine. But we do need all our fleets down here. Technology secured. It's mostly just annoying because we would have pieced this war out if it was our war. Let's get antimatter reactors. And Scorpio's a 24k station, so they're not getting through it. It's just annoying because we do kind of not want to lose this one. One, two, three, four. What I was hoping to do was keep this and set up another subject race, another hegemon hegemony race over here. And then we just keep that wormhole system. But it very much depends on whether we can actually get all of our fleet strength coordinated to take stuff back before this war pieces out. You can guarantee that the war will piece out at the worst possible time for it to piece out for us. It just will. Taking aggressive action. They wish to speak with us. Uh, we will take. We're going to take neutronium armor. We need one one point eight K to fully reinforce. We can sell that. There's still five hundred of them. Five hundred of them. Five thousand of them. They reinforce. Then upgrade.
Oh, you got to go all the way back there to upgrade. Yeah, don't don't do that. Don't do that. Stay there. They can upgrade. So that pushes us back to reasonable fleet sizes. Technology secured. I kind of wonder about heading to ambush this. They're going to take a ton of damage taking that station. Yeah, where are they taking back? Yes, yeah, so they're taking that back, which is annoying because that's the one we want. Right, once this fleet arrives, we're going on the offensive. They wish to speak with us. Sapient combat AI. What can possibly go wrong with having conscious si shift, uh, ships? Right, we're going to push this fleet up, because this fleet can beat that fleet. Let's move on the attack. And you two get on the attack over there. Because we do still have a chance here. Intellectual booty. Um, give me more naval capacity. We also have another civic point, so chat, what should we get as a civic point? Because we can reform the government. We haven't got enough influence for it yet, but I'll get a poll going. My instinct... ...is... ...diplomatic corps might be quite useful for us. Or efficient bureaucracy. That would be my kind of gut feelings. One of those two. But I'm open to other ideas, so if anyone in chat has differing ideas, let me know. But I think that would be the two that are in our most in most in our interests to take. This is going to be a pretty big space battle. But we should win it. In fact, they're running away. I really want that wormhole system. Oh no, the 4K fleet jumped back. That was a critical error on their part. Look at the pretty ships fighting. question is, are they going to jump in? They are going to jump in. No, nope, change their minds. Right, repair. And repair. They're going to jump into us, so we want to catch them when they jump in. Come on, lads, jump on in. Are you going to jump? Right. 
Right, what's critical for us is getting these two back. They wish to speak to us. Now watch and peace out this war before we capture that station. Are we going to get lucky? Probably not. After seizing control of the Narabo system, the something has destroyed the etherostatic engine that was under construction here. The Nukhtar Skull Lords can no longer threaten the future of our galaxy. Well, their attempt to be a uh, all uh, world ending uh, empire has ended. Who got it? Who took it out? Oh, these chaps took it out. I see the Elgate system has been thoroughly colonized as well. We'll have to deal with some of that. Get me some Elgate systems. Right, all of that territory is linked up at least. So I think we might still get away with this. We might still get away with our original plan here. Just not quite as well as we would have done. Because I don't think those armies are going to get back in time. But we'll try. Uh, we would absolutely like to extend our deal. In an ideal world, we get that system back as well. I mean, you might as well take Uski on the way here. But to get that system back, we'd need to invade it again. And I don't think the army's going to get there in time. We'll push for it, but I just don't think we're going to get there. Council elections. How close are we being on the council? Not close at all. We really need to push on our diplomatic weight. Yeah, so they've got a reasonably decent sized fleet up here. Not big enough to do to worry us. They wish to speak with us. All right, come on, man. Finish his war off. The entire Bithia system has been destroyed. A massive starship belonging to the Nahar Skull Lords took up position above the primary star and somehow triggered what can only be described as a supernova, which utterly devastated the rest of the system. The star then collapsed into a black hole. Only the Nahar starship, which they apparently refer to as a star eater, survived the cataclysm. Evidently, the Nahar Skull Lords now possess both the technology and means to destroy entire star systems. We really need to deal with them. Damn. I mean, people are carving into the Scully Lords, but... That is a worry. We 
have potential Skull Lord problems. Now we actually may want to deal with that fleet sooner rather than later. Before it can get reinforced basically. Come on little army, you can get there in time. Okay, perfect, we got them. Who's in, who's in that system? It's Crunch of Bones, Cries of Fallen, and Tears of Families. Ahoy there! Enemy ships have been spotted! Yeah, blowing up Star Wars systems is, is a tad dramatic, but it is what it is. But the good news is they are being chewed apart. There's our wormhole, so we could still jump through and at least tag grab the other end of the wormhole. Like if this if this war wasn't underway, we'd be going full full hammer and tongs at that, but Right, come on, General DeFondle, do your magic. Need more moths in this army. Victory! Drink up, my loyal crew. Well, we got the planet back. They wish to speak with us. The war is over, or rather, War One is over. Right. Well, that worked out quite well. So we need to deal with this space now. I feel like the Lavis might be on borrowed time, you know. So, this is already in sector space, so we don't have to worry about any of this stuff disappearing. Scorpio is not in sector space, which is potentially a problem. So this is all a sector. I was hoping they wouldn't get added to that sector, but they did. That's four jumps, so if we give them... If we set up an independent people there... They're going to get Voltars more, which we really want. Where does that go? Oh, hey, Skull Lords. Yay. No, that's not bad, because we could go through and take the other side of it. Uh, move sec sector capital to, to Ruathi. What is into there? Yeah, but I'd still lose Scorpio then as a station. 
One, two, three, four, because it's four jumps. What I'm trying to do, chat, is I would ideally like to release a bunch of planets down here as a vassal. That is tricky to do at the moment without losing Scorpio, which we don't want to lose. Because when if I set a vassal from this sector, it's going to take everything in that sector. Now what I could do is create a vassal on Varna here, because that is also an occupied planet. But that's going to put Zoltars more, most likely, in that sector. We can also take our um, Civic. I think we're going to take... I think we're going to take Diplomatic Corps. Now what we could do... So what we could do is send Scorbert and thing through the wormhole to secure that territory there, which we probably want to be doing anyway. We should be pulling... Where's Drums of War? So Drums of War should be coming back and just mopping up all of these Skull Lords as well. Because if we took the other side of the wormhole, we don't have to then worry about holding this side of the wormhole. So we're going to have stability issues on various planets. What we should actually do as well is... Admiral Thadrin is dead. Rip Admiral Thadrin. Now, Admiral Thadrin had paid for his son to be a wormhole. Uh, to be a leader when he died. Can anyone remember what Thadrin wanted his son stroke leader to be called? Because I can't. And I should have written it down. There you go. Hello, Fadrin. Admiral Dragonwoms. Coming up. But first, let's buy. We would like to hire an Admiral, please. Welcome to the fleet, Dragonworms. Welcome to the fleet. Uh, I will let you rename the wormhole if someone wants to cash in points and rename it and give it a fishy name. As long as it's not rude or uh, and it feels thematically inappropriate, we will rename it. What we should also do is let's sell some slaves because we're bound to have picked up a bunch of people who would just be problematic on these planets. So what's the population of this controsed of? Uh, it's controlled of the Piran, who are too well preference and I suspect should absolutely be a... Uh, sold into slavery. And the Thorkwall... No, the Thorkwall. We're selling the Thorkwall into slavery. We don't want the Necroids. They are ocean preference. We don't want the Necroids. But they are two mod survivors. Necroids are a pain in the ass. We're just going to sell Necroids. So I'm going to guess that on this planet. Got some robots, some glare, some lavis, some Andari Superior. Ooh. Let's 
a cybernetic. They have some serious traits. Uh, don't spoil the NFL for me because I haven't watched it yet. It's on my list of things to do after this. I kind of feel like we want to put the Andari Superior in charge just because we could. And on here... Thorquil, Pierune... This may end up being a Pierune Empire. Let's sell the Thorquil into slavery because we absolutely can. It's their own fault for picking a fight with us. All of you, get on the slave market. Right, the good news is they're selling nicely. Good evening, it's Zidan. Definitely evening. Look at all the nice slave sales going on. Let nobody say that we're not a good slaving nation. Yeah, 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 that's gonna happen. Um, so we need our fleets to get through there so we can set up in there, because it doesn't matter as much if we lose territory at that point. What we'll do then is we'll set the Varna will be the new race and we'll give them all of these but we're going to keep Pruntrazd because that has new border station written all over it. So you might as well start upgrading. Yeah I reckon we can beat the Skull Lords. As long as we don't have to face them all at once. Uh, we need 5k to reinforce all our fleets. Just check the ratios are still right. I have no idea what the fuck you are or why you exist. want to build into anything, build into that, please. I really, really wish I am half tempted to turn it on so that only um, Federation President can build fleets. Let's buy some of them. Fleet manager, reinforce please. Have all our slaves sold? Yes, so let's sell some more. Right, we need to filter out all of these because we don't need Quevos. I don't know, actually, they're not bad. No, let's get rid of... Let's finally sort out our slave things. So 
We're at low federation now, which means I'm going to flip. I don't think we need to flip any of that. War declaration present decides is what we want, and diplomatic weight. <laughs> Can't get them yet, so. Uh, slaves. What's next? Ultra Girl. Lithoids, yeah, get rid of them. Which means we might as well stock up again. Another batch of building. Because we we want to keep our empire relatively pure. Like we've got all of these random races hanging around and we just don't want them. So are you. The problem is that they aren't natively ocean preference either. They wish to speak with us. So they take up jobs, they breed unrest. Yeah, that's it. We're not racist, we just don't like clutter. Lavis. We shouldn't have any slave Lavis. Do they just need upgrading? Oh, interesting. They're a better version of the other Lavis. We could... Because we can re-engineer them to, engi uh, to ocean preference when we want to. But we need um, the adaption tech that allows us to adapt our own planets, because we've got one of those planets as a desert world. Abusins, you can go. Uh, Ultra Oberdin. I still want to know why they migrated to us. Like, maybe being a slave in old humans. Ugh, no. Yuck. Oh, I think we decided we quite liked the Brienne. But we should probably re-engineer them if they're going to stay. So we could... The Brienne are technically aquatic. Right. Well, I think we should keep these guys around. You can have residents. You can have stratified economy. You can serve in the military. Um, 
We're not going to give you migration controls. We are going to re-engineer you, so your ocean preference. Don't think we can make them anglers. We could totally make them our like science subspecies. Let's make these guys our kind of scientific subspecies. And let's call them the Cybrian. Barry Quando, your planets are fun and profit. Yeah, that's absolutely what we're doing. Cybrian, Cybrenum. So that's getting off and going, so market, sell slaves, Labis we'll worry about in a bit, I think that's everyone, we do have a lot of Miravandia again that we could sell off, I just don't want to yet, I think the dildo, the X murderous dildos are the ones we will keep as slaves. <coughs> Give me some more alloys. Right, you are there. So, go there. We grow ever stronger. Back who propagates is now a scout. Interesting. We don't get it. State of Men just does. Presumably it sees them as having a more legitimate border with them. In which case I'm not that fast. Let's just set up this vessel now because it's giving us proper problems. So we are probably going to give this to the PR rune then because it is a tomb world. So we need to create the Varna sector. So it takes that, which is not, not what I wanted, but whatever. And then we're going to go to... Where's our sector management? Plants and sectors. And the Vale of Newitz. Oh, we can't because we're not... We're at fucking war, aren't we? That's annoying. Yeah, Watford have sacked Ranieri. So it's a Monday. Of course Watford have sacked the manager. 
how many planets do the Skull Lords have left? Because just taking out their planets would deal with the problem of everything down there. Right, in which case we're keeping hold of this territory, but we're doing what we want to do with it. Sod it. Right, is this planet actually any good? It's a size 15. We could turn it into something useful. Its entire population is made up of Piran, who presumably are slaves. Right, you can be residents. You do have migration controls enabled. Soldiers only, stratified economy. Let's re-engineer you because we've got a point left. Oh, we need to finish the other one first, so that's fine. So this planet, we're keeping them. So what are we doing with this planet? It's got gene clinics, which is a waste. Give that over to moat harvesting traps would be nice. I made that a halo theatre. I suspect actually what we probably want to turn this into is a bureaucratic centre. So give me civilian industries and an administrative offices. That starbase is largely useless now. This starbase... Solar panel network, nice. You can get a gun and missile battery to protect trade. And then you can get two shipyards because you can be an emergency shipyard site. The plus side is that means we keep Zoltars more. So we'll want to turn that into a bit of a beast of a station. These planets here, are either of these any good? That is a size 21 desert world. That is a mining planet and a half. Or we could turn that into a commodities planet, which would not be a bad idea. First things first, replace that with hollow theatres. And let's clear out all of the population on this planet that we don't want. Now the Lavis are arid pre preference, which means they're not bad on desert worlds, so the, La the Lavis are the people we want to leave there. Um, we need names for these planets, by the way. As they're staying in the Empire. So we're going to need... Well, Valve now this is quite nice. I think we keep that. But this planet... I don't know, that's quite a nice name as well. Do we change the name of this planet, chat? I don't know. We will convert them to Oceanics once we can. Right, the robots can stay, but the glare can go. You're on profits rest. You can absolutely be sold. Sign me on profits rest. If we're keeping his planets, you're getting sold. And that would actually filter us down again. Mm. 
So size 21, it's stable again. I think we are probably going to turn that into... a civilian goods. It doesn't fit the exit boy again naming scheme, this is true. This planet is a size 15 tomb world. So let's just assume we do not want that planet at all. Oh, it's got some peer rune on it. So if we move the Lycians off of it. It's got two Pyrrhon on it. We could ping them over to... I kind of think we just want to abandon it. It's a size 15... Tomb World. You gents head over there. We need to move these off, but we're going to wait. Need to wait for the influence. But this planet is officially on the abandoned list. but oh we could beat that fleet though they wish to speak with us give me iron disruptors We can now use Hegemon Wars. Because we have our Hegemon Wars, because we have unlocked level 3. Which means we can go to medium. So, oh, yes. Right, does that give us any other. Very tempted to flip Federation fleet production to only President. Right, three on three thousand and twelve days until we can go to medium. I think we've already got a dunes out there though, that's the problem. We've got silence of the dunes. Uh, you go deal with that. Because that fleet is too scared to attack that. Because we could just work our way over here back towards that wormhole. I suspect the state of Mengis is the one that's going to come out of this looking good. But at the same time... Right, 
Right, the Cybrian have been adapted. So we were also going to adapt the Piran, weren't we? Turn them into something. Get rid of Unity from jobs. Pop housing usage. Uh, let's consume goods would be nice. Get over there and deal with that. They wish to speak with us. Big battle's about to start. Here we go. Smack. Right, get yourself over to there. So I think they're kind of down to... So they've still got their skull freaking planet smasher thing. But they're really just down to those two fleets now. Uh, they should, yeah, they get residents, it's fine, because we'd already set the species rights on the base species, so they, they inherited that. Apparently we've given the Yalon residents as well. Fair enough. They wish to speak with us. So we do have a few species in the Empire now. Uh, Murmur Shoals has jobs, it's just waiting for Pops to demote. Ring of Anvils can upgrade. Sort of oceans can upgrade. Can we do... Oh, it's got no governor. Give us a governor. Anti-crime, yes, please. Um, do we have anything that boosts... No, see, I want the diplomatic headquarter thing. I don't think the Null Scar Lords are going to be around for much longer. Survey speed is useless. X-ray lasers, please. So the reason I'm re sending into Murmur of Shoals is because they'll turn into foodie people and we need foodie people. Our scientists report a recent unexpected rise in CPU clock cycles in several of our research-dedicated supercomputer clusters. Oddly enough, initial attempts at reducing clock frequency in affected units have proven unsuccessful. It has been posited that the spike in computational powers could be used to improve our research capabilities. However, this would also necessitate a modesty, modest increase in energy. Yeah, no, go for it. Absolutely. Intellectual booty. Neutronium armor. 
Right. Um, let's start to think about... what we want to do. Hey, Herohide. Uh, are you playing on a beta patch or a stable one? A uh, stable one. Well, I am interested to see how the beta hat patch goes. I'm really excited about the changes to Unity that they're talking about doing. Um, I think it's overdue. And especially the things about ru changing rubber banding again on... Hex. It's too easy for players to kind of min-max races that just get so far ahead in tech. It just stops being fun. How are we looking on fleets? Let's build reinforce. I tell you what, I am going to flip that to Federation only fleet. Because I am bored of that little frickin' race building corvettes when we don't need them. Uh, 2,000 days until we can go medium. That station was bigger than I expected, but we should still win. The annoying thing is we probably won't get it. What I might do is use this as an opportunity to completely redo that fleet. Because we've been meaning to change our fleet template for a while. Oh no, did we get that one? I think we got that one. Yeah, because look, it's our colour. Nice. Right, so that means we'll get the adjacent territory if we push through. So if we push through with that fleet, we'd get that bit as well. We might as well push on with this fleet. I think we're going to recast this fleet. Because I want to move away from corvettes now. We're, we're past the point where corvettes are useful. Great whetstone, that's nice. Yeah, State of Men just are the real winners out of this war so far. That's the last really viable fleet they've got going on still. But they do have their freaking have they got two of them jesus they've got two star crusher things running around the galaxy but they're running out of territory in which to rebuild things so Admiral Wibbler has died. Rip. Rip Admiral Wibbler. We have a vacancy for a leader in our Federation fleet. Cash in your points, chat, should you wish. Can we get you off of there? I'll do. No, we need to move them last. So I've kind of fucked that up. Oh well. Subtle knife. Subtle knife. Let's get you a command roll. We would like to hire a leader. Hire an admiral. Mm. 
has our third fleet, which is Tears of Families. Because the nice thing about condensing all this space is it's forcing the front lines in the battle down here. So the AI is really focusing on that. An atmospheric deodorizer. No, thank you. I'm good. They're making an absolute hash of fighting that station does mean we should probably go there first because they'll fail to finish that off. Oh no, they might, they might win that. They're going to just about win that. Good on them. How are they doing against there? Yeah, they're going to wipe out that fleet now. Yeah, basically the, Scar the Skull Lords have still got their giant freaking planet destroyers flying around. But that's about it. Everything else is gone. So it's can the galaxy crunch down this this territory? Which it can, so. Right, fleet templates. Let's start by getting you back to um Where's our primary fleet building place again? I mean, there's an argument for saying we should have some additional shipyards now. Right, this is technically a border station. So you actually need to be reconfigured. We're in breach of galactic law, but that's fine. That'll just be because we haven't got enough ships built. So, cries of the fallen, yeet yourself as much as you can back to Vohal. needs upgrading so it can be even bigger star base. Uh, ecological adaption, that's what we want because then we can change planets. Meanwhile, you can disband all of those. Please let me disband them. We probably need to be starting to design some battleships up. We're moving to a cruiser and battleship based fleet, I think. I think we're at that point. Alfie Yang Delete! Thank you very much for the follow. Excellent name. So, what do we want to go with as our fleet? composition. Welcome to the stream. Because we could go with some like destroyers. Ruler of the Evening Star is a great name. 
Right, Ruler of the Evening Star. This is going to be... We want that to have an artillery bow. That's a lovely looking ship. An artillery core. And an artillery stern. This, this is just a... Sits back and pumps shots into the enemy. So it's going to have artillery brain. Now we don't have good, really good artillery weapons at the moment. We'll, we'll get some. That's range 80, that's range 80, that's range 100. So I think for now we'll go we'll do that. It's going to get Neutronian armor. It's going to get shield capacitor. Is it worth putting afterburners on sublight speed boost, isn't it? So it probably is. Gets all of that. Save. So we've got Ruler of the Evening Stars. So we could do Hangar Cruisers, because we've got a Hangar Cruiser already, haven't we? So we've got a Hangar Core Cruiser. Or do we create a new battleship that is Hangars? Because then we can get two, can't we? Let's do that. Guardian point defense, flat cannons. Give it an artillery stern. give it a broadside bow. So that's that's another quality looking ship. I really like the aquatic ship design. Really like that. So that is our carrier. Overlord of Battle is quite cool, but I think we want to hold it. Luminary of the Gods is cool. Let's go with that. So Luminary of the Gods is our new... So Luminary of the Gods is our new battleship design for carriers. Ruler of the Evening Star is our big gun battleship. I think we then design up some destroyers just to be swarmy muck annoying. They can always have destroyer escorts. And their line. Divine's Protector sounds good because they are essentially to cover ships. How are our aquatics faring in the galaxy? We are doing all right. We are a, a hegemon. We've got or a hegemon. We've got that as our kind of murderous butterfly subspecies. 
that we created and freed. So there are wallet warriors. Together we will demolish. Oh, hang on, no, actually, I should try this. Let me try this. Uh, where is it? Where have they all gone? Try launching it again. When in doubt, restart things. get that for now um yeah so these are our kind of friendly subspecies of murder moths we need to deal with the lavis coalition at some point but we could just absorb them now we can redo their planets um right what are we doing fleets fleets so i think we're going to demote Cries of Fallen is now officially a reserve fleet. So what are you short of? You're not short of anything, so that's fine. Crunch of Bones isn't short of anything, so that's fine. So what we could do... is... So this is essentially, let's create, so we're going to take, four of the cruisers out of that, or five of the cruisers out of that, because they're worth keeping. And then we're going to disband all of you. And those cruisers can merge with that fleet. So that creates one kind of decently sized fleet. That leaves the fed fleet and crunch of bones. But it means we can start building a completely new fleet. Our home base will be Vohal for now. And we want Ruler of the Evening Stars. So that's our artillery battleships. So I want eight of them. I want Divine's Protectors. I want 20 of them. And then these are our carriers. And I want two of them. Let's go with that balance. So that is our first modern battle fleet. A Varna station actually needs demolishing because it's not on our trade network. That really annoys me because that's still a bug that they haven't fixed. 
and they really need to fix that because it is bloody annoying. Murmur of Oceans should have jobs, we're just waiting for people to downgrade, so that's fine. We could do with another foundry world actually. Maybe we don't make that world we were doing up here a commercial world. Was it this one? Yeah, let's make this a foundry world. They wish to speak with us. Make it a forge world. Nope, move along. What's my take on the new Unity changes? I've not looked into them too deeply yet, but I am absolutely pro and in favour of anything that sorts out the game balance. So overall I am in favour of them. I've not played the open beta though, I'm deliberately not playing it, because I'd rather let the open beta go for a bit and then think about playing it. I am very much in favour of what they're trying to do. Let's upgrade our research stuff here. Intellectual booty. Ah, uh, that's a very good deal, to be fair. Um, how are we looking, actually? Did we do the... No, we need five more to be able to do Secrets of the Yurt. What do we want? Particle lances. Yes, please. That's a nice, big, chunky weapon. We are starting to not generate a lot of cash now because we are going to start throwing out some battleships. So we could probably do with getting another commerce station going reasonably well. I would very much like to abandon this planet completely. That's going to cost us 25, and then we've got another 100, is it, for abandoning the planet they completely? Rip the Great Flock. Skull Laws are they gradually being worn down. Someone's got to take down that 14k station now, which seems a big ask. <sighs> They don't have big fleets running around anymore. The, the big issue is, is getting past those stations. Like, that's just a suicide run. Why would you do it? I'm kind of happy for the rest of the galaxy to smash their heads against that though. While we sort ourselves out. Uh, we've got some untapped minerals over there, so go get them. Oh, that's why we suddenly stopped losing money, because we weren't having our 20% ship upkeep discount. I did wonder why our income suddenly dipped so much. There you go, that's a bit better.
leaves us no closer to abandoning this though. I mean, unless we adapt it. We could adapt it. It wouldn't be the end of the world if we adapted it. Because we now have got ecological adaption. Okay, right. Let's think about what we're doing in tech. Let's get the research boost. Now what that does mean is we can start changing our planets up. So which of these planets is a desert planet? Because one of them is. It's not command. Burgess is Gaia, I think. Ocean, Gaia, Ocean, Continental, where are you? Thrum of Currents. Let's make sure we've got the Edict on. Terraforming Gases. Terraform into an Ocean World. That is going to be... Time. But we'll deal with that. Hiss of Steel is Ocean. Can we ter terraform that? Because we might as well just terraform it at this stage. No, we need Climate Restoration to terraform Tomb Worlds. That we can terraform. That's everything. So they become ocean planets. We're leaving trade on the table there, so let's get that upgraded and into the network. We do have too many star bases. So let's find some pointless star bases we can downgrade. You do not need to be a star star hold. Did we gain any up here in our gained territory? We did. You do not need to exist. You do not need to exist. And you do not need to exist. That's better. You wish to speak with us. They wish to speak with us. That needs upgrading, but let's just build some stuff in the meantime. Send the Fed fleet there. We could turn Ruthari into a shipyard. With crew quarters. Who died? Grand Marshal Honeydew Shoot has died and election is underway. We have elected Indigo Pod, previous envoy on Whisper of Home, to become the next ruler. They wish to speak with us. Market fee and trade value discounts is nice. Right, so you actually need to base yourself out of Ruthari. Because that is becoming a shipyard. We'll absolutely take that again because it means we can finally 
the secrets of the yurt. Do that, please. Ever stronger. Intellectual booty. Intellectual booty. Uh, give me fusion missiles. Because I'd actually like to put them on my destroyers. Part of me thinks we should just downgrade that. Yeah, let's just downgrade it. And then upgrade it again. And we'll make it collect trade. Because there is trade there that we are losing out on. Yeah, they're still struggling over here. They have finally managed to take that station, though. Nicely done. I had to bring a 27k fleet in to do it, but they did it. Good work. <laughs> Governor Gemelkart has died. You, sir. Give me antimatter missiles, please. Actually, no, 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 no. Give me battleship stuff. Because we're about to go on a massive battleship finished. building range. We have managed to recreate the cleansing process that the Yurt would use to protect our hatchery worlds. It does have some concerning short-term effects on the biosphere, but once it recovers, the planet should be more suitable to our needs. Um, research option games. Hostile environment adaption plus 50%. That will allow us to terraform our tomb worlds. Useful. We haven't done the drone study. We should just get that knocked out of the way. Research seed plus 5%. I won't say no. We need to name this fleet, so what are we calling it? What do we stop calling it? What was the fleet that uh, Dragon Woman's camp commanded before called? Drums of War, Crunch of Bones, Tears of Families. What do we call that one? A special project. I think we still got cries. It was it was cries of something, wasn't it? The cries of the fallen. They wish to speak with us. I'm going to dump that station right up because there's no reason not to. Intellectual booty. Yeah, Skull Lords are on their last legs now. We grow ever stronger. Proton launchers, yes please. Then we can refit these battleships. Blade of Salt is nice. I like that. Yeah, Skull Lords are done.
They've got like one big station left. But that's it. Tej9606, thank you very much for the following. But I tell you what, the state of Mengis are the real winners here. There's been an incident at one of our facilities on Ring of Anvils. A lab AI involved in societal research has suffered terminal hardware damage, resulting in the loss of core software and memory systems. As a result, there will be a projected decrease to research output at the lab until the new AI installation's algorithms have been sufficiently seeded. The circumstances behind this terminal failure are still unclear. Hmm, let's launch an investigation, shall we? This sounds like something worth investigating. Our inquest into the loss of an AI on Ring of Anvils has returned some baffling results. Prior to its terminal failure, the AI had made repeated attempts at purging its own records and memory banks. When lab staff disabled the AI's access to a deletion functions, the AI appears to have forced a termination of its core operations by manipulating hardware capacitor control in order to overload its own drive circuitry. Quite simply, our AI sought its own destruction. That remains unclear as to why. Get to the bottom of this. Some more alloys? We have concluded our inquiry into the strange matter of the AI self-termination on Ring of Anvils. Evidently, following months of evolutionary computation, the AI produced several alarming results with regard to casualty projections in the case of an all-out war between the Iron Songs Among Stars and our rivals. Despite repeated re-examinations of all available data, recourses and contingencies, the AI's projections remained indicative of mutually assured annihilation. At this point, the AI began purging its own memory banks and records, and the rest, as they say, was history. Ominous. Disconcerting indeed. Right, that fleet should base out of there as well. Or we build crew quarters here. We could do. We are losing food though. Pain in the diet down the left side. Yeah, you're not wrong. We do at least have something starting to approach decent, decent alloy generation there. Anything else on here? Still got plenty of jobs. Just don't think so, really. Clara Forges. Still plenty of jobs. Plenty of jobs. Decent amount of jobs. Rip General de Fondle, who served us well. Well, I say served as well. He did try and fight an Ether Drake. They wish to speak with us. So you know that wasn't good. I mean, respect for him to, to him for trying, but probably shouldn't have tried to fight an Ether Drake. I think we probably should flip if we're gonna if 
we're going to keep profits rest. Which we could do. Do need to sort our stuff out here. I mean, we could just invite them into the fed, but they are border goring us, and that annoys me. Well, it does amuse me slightly that they just still exist. Like they've had an entirely peaceful galactic existence. We grow ever stronger. Research complete. Gateway travel. It's gateway travel. And Thought could have declared war on us again. Fucking hell, Thought will. It's just like, why would you bother? They go protect that, they go protect that. We'll just carry on building up the battlefield fleet, battleship fleet. Do I think the new aquatics pack is worth it? Yes, I absolutely do. I think the new aquatics pack is one of the best flavor packs they've released, to be honest. Um, I think the two new origin starts, we're playing one of them at the moment, are amazing. I think the new artwork is incredible. I think the new ship designs are amazing. So I'm just standing up. It's been a long day sitting down. So yeah, I completely welcome to the to the to the chat, obviously. Um, but I I would say it, it is one of the ones worth buying, um, if just for the ships alone. We have received accounts of unusual behaviour exhibited by robot units on the UX clearing. At unpredictable intervals, a number of our planet-side robots will cease all assigned functions and begin moving to a seemingly randomly determined location in complete synchronicity, timed down to the millisecond. During these bizarre congregations, the affected robots do not appear to engage in any observable form of communication or data transfer. They just stand there, completely still, staring. Investigation has been unable to determine a reason behind this recent phenomenon. The duration for which the robots remain in this trance-like state before resuming normal functions varies, as does their time for triggering and destination. No logical cor correlation or causation has been found, and our population is understandably distressed by these eerie gatherings. Um, do we want to scrap them? No, get used to it. Let the robots meet. If robots want to meet, robots want to meet. Right, do we actually want any territory out of this? That's the big question. I mean, we're way over our territory already. Let's just humiliate them. These are all their ships. So all their ships are up in the north, so we might actually just want to pull tiers of families back and 
push in the south with Cries of the Fallen. No, Cries of the Fallen is our new fleet that's still building. Crunch of Bones can push down and just start taking stuff. We do need an army again. So that means we need to go to Gloas. Glamour Forges. Slake Moths. Three armies of Slake Moths. Really wish we had more Slake Moths. We'll get there. And Command, give me... What have we got here? Got four units of regulars. Give me another four units of regulars. We're going to need a general. So we do have a general, if anyone wants to claim the name of a general. Yeah, they're trying to push in fast from the north. So what we probably want to do is sell some of that, sell some of that, sell some of that. Edicts, give me armor, explosives, ammo, boost, fuel, crystals. Um, market. Give me a bunch of alloys. Good evening, HMS Troutbridge. Yeah, so they're trying to push in hard and fast from the north. That's basically what they're going with. Oh, we got that, did we? I didn't even notice we got that. So Drums of War is coming south. We've got 11k there already just with those six battleships. So we can bring that up if we need to and when we're ready to. You're just going to push in down here, deal with them. I partly assume they started this war just because they know they're on the back foot against us now. It would be nice to finally get a vassal species out of this. Over here. Or maybe up here. Like, there's no Which good stuff up here we want. Let's bring that fleet up as well and continue to reinforce into it. Pirates! Oh, we've got pirates. Oh, over there. That probably means that needs upgrading, but we'll hold off on that for now. So we have got two fleets there that we need to slightly worry about. I reckon actually we can pull Tears of Families down south. Between these what's going on up here they'll hold this, that won't be a problem. How about you jump to there instead. You jump, carry on jumping to there. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, it's like, sure, lads, have fun. The robotic workers on Eukrik's clearing have resisted an influx of Lycian labourers, claiming recent geothermic instability in the region has made the area unsafe for organic habitation. Oddly enough, our planetary surveys have not been able to confirm these claims. Hmm. Do I leave the region to the robots? Uh, just started the new game last night and I have two choke points, one guarded by a dimensional holler and the other by, and the other by marauders. Best way to handle this as a new player. Restart the game. If those are your only two ways out and you haven't got room to grow, you've just got a bad start. Like, unless you're going to play tall, you just restart. If you're going to play tall, you've just got very nicely secured borders. So if you've got like a wormhole or a gateway in there, you could play that out. But otherwise, I would honestly just restart. Having a border with the Marauders is quite handy because you can do what I've been doing in this game, which is you can use them to hire leaders from, and their leaders are very, very good. And you could potentially get the the um, Cosmic Whetstone event, which gives you 10% firepower boost. But generally speaking, you just, you know, you if, if you're that... I've, I've had one before where I had one route out and I had the Enigmatic Fortress on it, and I think Taharas has had that as well. And it's just like, there's no point. You just restart. Um, do you want Terminators? This is how you get Terminators. Who wouldn't want Terminators? Fine, yeah, uh, we'll trust the robots. Why would a robot lie? I don't, I don't see why you lot think a robot would lie. If a robot says you can't do it, you can't do it. They wish to speak that is a big fleet. A big fleet that is coming to murder us. Jump out of that system for now, please. I don't fancy losing all my shiny new battleships quite yet. They'll go back in together, basically. Right, both of you go back in and demolish that fleet. Uh, what do we want? Clear some blockers. Probably getting to the point where we should actually be doing that. Um, let's clear some blockers. You've taken that system. That's probably a bad idea because we're about to get trapped. We're probably going to get that fleet wiped. Oh well. It's just another fleet we need to rebuild. This is going to go our way, so... Like that is 40% in our, in our war score favour now. That's how much of a difference wiping out that fleet made. They wish to speak with us. Oh, no, they're not going that way. If they're going that way, we're all right. Let's wait there and see what happens. If they swing around and come that way, we're fucked. Building tall means research heavy and little expansion. Yes. Um, and it's not as fun or good to do. I, I prefer building tall, to be honest, but it's quite hard to do. Um, in the current meta, basically. Um, yeah, they're going to jump out of system. Like, I would be looking at that, it, your, the way you described it, is if I had enough territory to get something like this, and I had, like, five planets, like five planets, I'd play it out. Because five planets is a good amount of starting planets, and by that point, if you really want to go for the Marauders, you probably will be able to go for the Marauders. So... If I, ha if I could get five good planets out of it, 
I would do it. And the thing when I say good planets is you're thinking size 15 plus and they either need to be of your planet type or you can terraform them to your planet type. If I was in that position, I'd absolutely do it. Because weirdly you don't have to build any fleets early on if that's who your neighbours are. Because it's not like anyone's going to attack you. Of course, we can. Can't believe we're actually going to save this fleet. Just shoot that and then get away. Right, we should probably push in from the north. So let's send drums of war to retake that. Johnny Biscuit, thank you for the follow. Oh, by the way, Johnny, on my YouTube channel, if you are still not quite sure how to, to build out your planets or, or that kind of thing, I do have a really good little five minute video on just generally how to think about building out your colonies. Um, it, just, it, like, just, it just shows you like how I build out my colonies and talks about how you can sort of min-max them. So maximize what, they, what you get out of them rather than just building lots of different little things on them. I can't believe they didn't smash us there. I wonder where they're going. Are they at war with someone else as well? They're only at war with us. Are they going gateway? We want to take that gateway because it's a terminal egress. It's an L gate. It does mean going to war with the state of Menges though, which is less appealing at the moment. All at the Skull Lords are down to one last system. Well, two. After completing the terraforming of IKX clearing, our terraforming specialists have spotted a golden opportunity. The remaining terraforming equipment can potentially be repurposed for the infrastructure of the planet. Um, we probably want... What were we talking about doing with... We were going to turn that into a foundry place, weren't we? So we'll have a foundry district on there. So that is now an ocean world. Science of Dunes is now an ocean world. So actually in species terms, we now want to... Where are our... We haven't got population controls enabled on this. No, we haven't. Good. The Lavis. We would like to create a new template for you. Um, actually, I'm not that fussed about house usage. Conservation would be nice, and I would like you now to be ocean preference. And we will call them the Sea Lavis. They can still be Levan and Levi. Apply the Sea Lavis template. To every Lavis population, please. Apply it to that lot first. Number of pops selected, 53, 57. That's right. Apply. Do that. They wish to speak with us. There's a moat there that we're missing. I assume they're going for a wormhole to try and come around behind us, maybe? I mean, sure. So you actually... Right, we need to redesign our ships because we've got better weapons for our battleships now. So we want... No, not zoom out in the gallery. This is why I say the aquatics models is worthwhile, by the way. Look at these. Look at these bad boys. How cool are they? Right, we can give you proton launchers. Lovely. Save. 
and your carrier core. Safe. Which means we want to refit that fleet. Rise of the Fallen, go upgrade. Oh, they're honestly, the, they're lovely models. Let's get plasma thrusters. Right, we can do an ascension perk as well. So what ascension perk are we going for? So we could ourselves decide we're going to become the crisis. I feel like that is um, not good. Defender of the Galaxy might be nice. I think Galactic Contender is what we want. I think we're going to go Galactic Contender. Diplomatic Weight Boost. When the Fallen Empires or Awakened Empires await, we can damage them more. We don't have to worry about the Gate Builders because the gates have already been opened and they didn't cause any issues. But I reckon we go with that. I reckon we go Galactic Contender. We need to start thinking about resource generation. It should kind of sort itself out. Kind of, over time. have a couple of food districts in the meantime. Yeah, it's just, yeah, very, as we're being space Prussians. We thought we had climate restoration. Do we not have climate restoration? Do we just have hostile environment? That's what it is, isn't it? Just carry on smacking these fleets around. So that can they can actually chill there. Why would not honestly like? I, why would a robot lie? I don't know why all of you keep insisting that robots would lie. Repair, please. Oh, we have armies, don't we? We do have a general name available, so if anyone wants to name a general, feel free. So let's get those armies down so they can start invading some places. Let's start going down this way and just deal with all of this. I do wonder where their fleets went. Last legs for the Nashari Skull Lords. You're repaired, go kill them. Like my main fear is two fleets suddenly popping into existence somewhere. Ah, oh, there they are. Look, they're going through there. They're going through there. They went through the L gates. They're aiming for that. And that wormhole is going to jump them in to Zoltar's Moor. That's what they're doing. You two head to there. Zoltar's more. 
And we could build platforms on it, but I don't think we'll bother. It'll do some damage to them. I did wonder where all those fleets were going. I mean, it makes sense. So we're positive in food again. Slightly negative in consumer goods, but not a huge issue. Generating alloys nicely, which is a key thing. Intellectual booty. Intellectual booty. We have gateway travel. Archimitters. Archimitters are fun. Exercise weapons. One of our orbital mining stations appears to have suffered a major system malfunction. Sector management launched an on-site investigation when the station crew failed to answer scheduled hails despite a notable increase in mining output. Upon investigation, it became apparent our station's life support system underwent a cascade of terminal failures, resulting in the death of all crew members by suffocation. Incredibly, the station's AI has been continuing operations unmanned, based on procedures established by the crew members prior to their ultimate demise. With a few minor adjustments, and the effectivity of this now automated station could be maintained. A tragedy with a silver lining. What could possibly go wrong? Uh, let's take advanced afterburners. They wish to speak with Probably, us. but you know, sweet. Labour overseers on UTEX clearing report a disturbing development among our robotic workforce. Two weeks ago, at roughly 0300 hours, robotic worker A5091B paused in the middle of his designated tasks, approached the IKEX Clearing's night shift foreman and uttered the following query. Is unit A5091B in possession of a soul? The on-duty foreman logged the event as a software glitch and reordered the robot to resume regular functions. However, upon boot up the following work cycle, robo robotic worker a 5091 b once again repeated its soul-searching query and continued to persist despite multiple debugging attempts. Troubling, the behavior appears to have spread to other robots in the same serial range. To the detriment of production flow, it appears that the effective units will require a response to their question before they can resume normal functions. Well, chat. There's a big question for you. Do our robots have souls? Do our robots have souls, chap? I think we're going to have to put this to a vote, aren't we? Do our robots have souls? Yes. Life is everywhere. Two minute poll up now, refresh if you do not see it. Do our robots have souls? That is your important question I now demand that you ask yourself.
How are we looking on our poll? Let's have a look. Apparently robots are looking like they will have souls. If they are able to feel emotions enough to ask that question, I would say yes. It is a good point. And the results are in. Yes, our robots have souls. Now, I will reveal my own personal feelings. Yes, I do completely agree. I have never subscribed to the theory that just being organic makes us special. I think at some point humanity will have to face the point that we accept that robots can have souls. No, I think therefore I am. If they, if they believe that they think, what is to distinguish them from us? We are just squishy robots at the end of the day. Assure the robots, they too have souls. If a haphazard collection of, elect of electrical impulses running through protein strands can create a soul, why not a collection of electronic impulses running through metal? 100% agree. We are just organic machines. Yes, we are. There you go. See that they've just popped into that system. But we've got more than enough forces to crush them. Like they're feeling really proud of themselves right now. So yeah, well done, lads. Don't get don't get used to it. So we'll group the feet fleets in Mosquita and head in from there. And they've split their fleets, which is basically the worst thing they could have done. I think they're regretting their life choices right now. Uh, frankly, I think calling ourselves organic machines is selling machines short. Yeah, no, I don't disagree. But yeah, I do kind of think, you know, when you hear like people talk about, oh, when machines like become sentient, they'll destroy us all. I'm not convinced of that. I do think it will come down to something, an event like that. I think it will come down to how well humanity deals with the, the question being asked. And I don't think we'll deal with it very well because we're a terrible, terrible species. The N Nahar Skull Lords have gone. Their attempt to become the crisis did not work. The state of Menges are the people who have really profited from that. Oh, they chickened out. Let's go take that back. They wish to speak with us. Uh, we probably want to get. Oh yes, psionic theory. Yes, please. No, make me psychic. Make me psychic. What port are you enjoying tonight? Um, I am not enjoying one right now this minute, but um, after the stream, I am very, very tempted to finally open my bottle of 1961 port that I have got for Christmas from my wife. Very expensive bottle of port. I am very tempted. Failing that, I've got um, a nice 30 year old port in the cupboard. I might open that instead. With the 1961, it kind of depends on how fast I want to drink it. If that makes sense. Um, is that army going to get out to get killed? Because no, they're fighting the station. Go invade that, please. Uh, 
1961 is a collator. The one I've got in the cupboard that's slightly younger, the 30 year old, is a tawny, I think. So the wife is in with Little Stray Kitty at the moment. Who is doing well? He's doing well for himself. I'm half tempted to see if we can status quo this war out because it is just not doing us any good. We're only minus four of achieving war goals, so we'll push on. Capturing that planet will probably do it. The drums of war. For the first time in recorded history, the warring factions of the Arisu have united under a single great Khan. This mysterious warlord, who accorded, according to some accounts is a powerful psychic, has emerged from their warrior caste and accomplished what most thought would be impossible. Through a combination of guile, charisma and military genius, the newly crowned Great Khan has won the utter loyalty and devotion of all Arisu factions. Now that they are no longer busy killing each other, the Arisu are turning their attention elsewhere. Great fleets are massing for war, crewed by eager war warriors who are now steadfast comrades in arms despite having mortal enemies mere months ago. Is that chaps on our border? It's blatantly going to be chaps on our border, isn't it? No, they're the Abusians. They're the Abusian freeholders. Sweet. Anyone know where the Arisu are? Near our borders, up there. Okay, right, we're going to need to really beef up that station. Right, Gargantua needs massively beefing up. Right, upgrade all of those. Means we probably need to move the main battle feet to Gargantua. We should probably build a shipyard nearby. Oh no, we put two on here, so that's fine. So we can still build ships there. Um, a new threat is born. Right, let's see if this works now. Great Khan of the Arisu Horde, and I am here to announce to the galaxy that a new age is upon us. The dark era where Arisu would senselessly butcher one another for scraps of resources or a misguided sense of honor has finally come to the end. I have solemnly promised my people a new beginning through the formation of a great empire that will forever enshrine the name of the Arisu species in the annals of galactic history. To those who would stand in our way, know this. I will stop at nothing to realize the true destiny of my people. If you oppose us, the Arisu Horde will grind you into dust. Have a nice day. Strong words. I assume that worked this time then. I was trying to set that up for the uh, stream with um, uh, with uh, yeah, I was trying to set that up for the stream with Sayuza. We had a contract. Right. That doesn't mean they've joined in, does it? Because I'd be very disappointed if we just lost our admirals. Nope, we're good. So yeah, so we probably will need to fight them. But we can hold them at Gargantua. My big worry was these guys becoming the Great Khan. Because if they'd become the Great Khan while we were fighting down at the bottom, that would have been problematic. But as it is, the Irisu Horde 
I mean, the other thing is, if they're stupid enough to go through the Fallen Empire, they're going to die very fast. And the AI is sometimes stupid enough to go through the Fallen Empire. If they go up that way and round, they'll be fine. In fact, actually, they've got to go to the through the Fallen Empire to get to us, so th th there's no connection there. It's only going to be if they come down that way we've got a problem. What a voice changer thing is a desktop sound. So I've deliberately left that on because I want to know when I'm turning it on and off. And in Stellaris it kind of works as almost a kind of like new message alert. You know, it's almost like them radioing through, so I figure it kind of works. I don't think we're going to have a Great Khan problem at all. I think that Great Khan is going to smack himself out. Minus 12. They've, you've asked this before. That dude, we're telling you, you've got souls. Don't stress about it. We're starting to get up there in strength. We actually probably should be assigning a ton of our available envoys to this because we're not using them for anything else. And at our federation, we need to move up to medium rank. Which means... Is there anything on this we want to change? Our vote hasn't gone through yet. Come on, vote it in. Thank you. Uh, vote weight is diplomatic. They're against that, but we can buy them, buy them some favours. That'll do it. Give us a couple of favours, please. Snake moths. Have some minerals. Got tons of the fucking things. Activate. Minus eight, getting close. Wonder where that big fleet's gone again. They wish to speak with us. They wish to speak with us. Hello, boys. We'd like a word. Very much like a word with you. Minus one. Uh, these armies should land on there to avoid getting murdered. This is what's to watch for. If that changes colour, the Great Khan might do well because they can go round. But if it doesn't, they're, it's just, the Great Khan's just screwed because they can't go through the Fallen Empire. Right, let's go back. Start eating into this way again. Tell you what, if you take that station, that's probably enough. 
Hi, have you tried our new improved railgun slugs? Have a few free, courtesy of the Space Prussian Navy. Indeed, indeed. Advanced afterburners. Are swarm missiles actually any good? I'm never sure. Let's go some antimatter missiles. The anomalies observed across our information networks, co uh, computation engines and synthetic workers have finally come to a violent end. Panicked reports indicated that almost half of the iron sungs among stars fell to the machine uprising before protective bulkheads, physical and virtual, slammed shut. War is not only inevitable, it is not is already upon us. Chat. You have a choice to make. What are we going to do, chat? We could fight and stay as the Iron Songs Among Stars. Or we say, you know, we could, we could not fight as the Iron Songs Among Stars. It is too late for you, Organics. That's your other option. Those are your two options. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to exit to desktops because this is your choice for next week's stream. Actually, no, I should let you chaps. You're here now. I'm going to let you choose what we do. I'm going to let you choose. Have a two minute poll. And we're not allowing additional votes on this one. Votes are in. Get your votes in. New poll is up. Two minutes. I know. And after we'd said they had souls as well. Very ungrateful, really. <laughs> Bryn Ree, thank you very much for the follow. It is appreciated. How's our poll doing? There's a significant kind of percentage of you wanting to fight. I think we have two bots on the stream. They are the ones who have voted to be assimilated. So much for souls, but then again, having souls does not make someone a pacifist. True, true. We will have to fight. They will have to fight for their right to Wi-Fi. Voting's almost done. I think it's safe to say we know which way this is going. We shall fight. Then we fight. Intellectual booty. 
So what do we lose? We lost. They have a bunch of battleships. Good news is we didn't lose our fleet. So we do have the main battle fleet. No, we lost our Slake Moth planet. No. Um, let's unlock some stuff. We lost Varna. Right, we can take that back pretty quickly though, because we got lucky there. We had fleets in the area. So we can strike down the Omni Sequence in Varna. This is our enemy. The Omni Sequence, a machine intelligence, a very ungrateful machine intelligence. Well, surprisingly receptive to our requests. They got Scorpio as well. So we could status quo them. So we could status quo them. And the good news is they only got those problems. They did get Hadar, which is a downside, so we're going to have to take that back. I wonder whether we fight them to a piece and then essentially turn them into our next puppet empire. Because we did want another puppet empire. Uh, it depends, because we could status quo them. So what we do is we take back that planet. We take back the planets we wanted and then we'd status quo them and let them keep probably Ibiri and then we build them out this way